Between them. ByteDance owns TikTok. If ByteDance is told, and, and the CCP owns ByteDance because the CCP, CCP owns everybody in China. Well, and so we, by law, they can make them do whatever they want, and they say that by law, you can't tell anyone about it. So they can make you hand over that data. Is that correct? Data is stored here in American soil by an American well, company you say that. overseen we, by American We thought that, but leaked audio from 80 internal TikTok meetings shows that U.S. user data has been repeatedly accessed from China. It was aggressive. TikTok CEO Sho Zichu was grilled on Capitol Hill yesterday over TikTok's data and connection to the Chinese Communist Party. Chu stated that ByteDance employees may still have access to some U.S. data from TikTok. China's foreign ministry responding this morning to that hearing, claiming that China has, quote, never asked nor will ever ask any company to provide data or intelligence located in foreign countries. Joining me right now is senior fellow at the Mercatus Center at George Mason University, uh, Weifang Zong. Weifang, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Is that, is that even possible that the CCP, China, can say we have never asked and we never will? Thanks uh, for having me, Maria. Good morning to you. The CCP can say whatever it wants, uh, but it doesn't mean that it has credibility. So just last year in August, the CCP asked uh, dozens of big tech companies in China to hand over details of their algorithms. So now th this is not about user data. Uh, user data that are on the uh, cell phones from American users, but it's about how they run algorithms behind uh, the software to understand the preferences of, of the American people. So ByteDance was one of the uh, dozens of companies that handed over details of the algorithms to the, to the CCP. And so uh, the CCP could come out to say that it doesn't have the data or it doesn't ask for data, but it, I don't think it has any credibility at all. Yeah, of course. We know the laws in China that you will answer to the CCP if they want anything. Chu provided evasive answers when asked about China's human rights abuses as well and whether or not it's showcased on TikTok. Here's Arizona Congresswoman Debbie Lesko asking Chu about the Uyghur population in China. Watch. Do you agree that the Chinese government has persecuted the Uyghur population? In 2019, TikTok suspended the account of Feroza Aziz, an American 17-year-old, after she put out a video about the Uyghur genocide. So your answer, sir, does not align with history. That particular I, case was a mismoderation. I believe I, that video had a picture of Osama bin Laden, so no, we thought it was content no, that was inappropriate. I, yeah, I looked it up. That was a different. So, uh, I mean, he's, he, he could be in a lot of trouble if he says anything about the Uyghur population, right? We found, I mean, let's talk about, you know, what happens to him. Show if he says the wrong thing in this hearing, because we've seen umpteen examples of people getting disappeared in China if uh, the CCP doesn't like what you're saying. Absolutely. I think uh, fundamentally what, you, uh, what people say uh, oftentimes are determined by their interests. So if you look at this CEO of uh, TikTok, he actually owns shares uh, of ByteDance, the parent company in China. And the parent company in China uh, are controlled by CCP members at a higher level of the management uh, in Beijing. And so all these are connected. But the problem I would point out, actually, is that the user data is not the only uh, concern here, or even the bigger concern here, because I think more threatening is the algorithm underneath that understands the preferences and behavior of American consumers and American uh, users of the app, which would give the CCP in the future insights about how or what American people like or how they would behave. And that doesn't even need a future user data to, to tell Beijing. So Beijing would, would be able to figure out how to modify its propaganda campaign overseas to uh, change American people's mind. And that's, I think, is the most dangerous part yeah, of the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, th that's a great point, because it's the propaganda as much as it is the surveillance. I mean, well, by the way, we've seen surveillance from uh, Huawei, all of those settlements that uh, Huawei had to do with so many American companies for stealing intellectual property. There's that. I want to get your take on what the CCP does with all this data, because a new Trafalgar Group poll finds over 74 percent of Americans agree with state legislation to ban Chinese companies and citizens from owning U.S. farmland. They're trying to buy up farmland right near military installations. They've got all of these apps. You know, TikTok is not the only one, uh, We think. So your thoughts on what the goal is of the CCP when, once they have all of this American data? That's a great question, Maria. 
It speaks to the, a huge difference between Chinese intelligence and American intelligence. So in the United States, when it comes to intelligence collection, oftentimes the primary method is uh, clandestine operations. We are talking about sending spies to, you know, uh, get information from Beijing, from Moscow. But if you look at the Chinese intelligence model, they uh, prioritize collecting publicly available information, including what's floating, uh, you know, uh, on the uh, semiconductor, uh, sorry, uh, uh, floating on uh, telecom networks through Huawei devices or uh, user data from TikTok. Wow. And the, the goal is to actually do analytics of those data, to understand what the American people are thinking and doing. That's what uh, we need to catch up on, because the Chinese are uh, ahead of us. Yeah, I was just trying to understand if they were using the information against us at some point, blackmail. Well, that, that's uh, so there are two levels of use of uh, information in this case. Yeah. If they, uh, like when they track the whereabouts of journalists, right? So they could use that for to target particular individuals. That's right. But if they understand how the American voters are thinking, okay. they might even have a chance to interfere in elections. Yeah, well, f for sure. Weifang, thanks very much. Great to see you. Weifang Zhang joining us this morning.